Well, greetings again, everyone. It's been a bit of a while since I did my last video, and that's because, as you can see here, everything is a little bit different and everything. We're moved into a brand new townhouse, getting out of that apartment we were in for about a year and everything, and uh, obviously it took some time to get everything painted and set up and stuff moved over and unboxed and all this type of stuff and everything. So it's been a bit of a chore the last couple of weeks getting everything moved over and all that type of stuff set up and get ourselves nice and settled in here. And so, I've exhausted the entire backlog of content I had for you guys, so uh, here I am in front of the camera to get things started off on a brand new foot, after I got the Predator review done just in time to get everything finally packed up, the last few things packed up, to move over here. So I got Predator done, I got the commentaries backed up, and all this type of stuff, so everything's on the channel now that I had backed up, and now we have to start getting new content laid up, and basically has to start with me here. Doing a video update and then get my gears rolling forward to get a fucking movie review set up for you guys here and uh, hopefully get commentary scheduled out in the next few weeks. I'm gonna try to <laughs> things a little bit slower here. I feel a little kind of hopped up on caffeine, so I'm gonna try and moving forward here. But uh, let's start out with some media pickups before I get into rambling nonsense of random things. And uh, it's been out for about a year now, but I finally got the Stream Factory release of John Carpenter's The Thing. Maybe because I've had the DVD for the longest time. I had the original release of the DVD, which was non-anamorphic, but had all the fantastic features on it. Then I did the upgrade to the anamorphic release a couple years after that. And uh, for whatever reason, I was just feeling kind of stalled out in getting the Blu-ray upgrade when Screen Factory announced their release and everything. But uh, for whatever reason, I felt like I was so content with the DVD and everything. It just didn't feel like I really wanted to get going and jump on it and everything. And as always, as always... Hoping the price will kind of come down a little bit on these things, but they never really do for Screen Factory stuff. And so, a little bit complicated. I originally ordered this off a deep discount, but then I kind of realized the price was good on Amazon and Best Buy price message to Amazon. So I figured I'd just go over over the weekend and get pick this up. And I got to do some things with deep discount because they already shipped my order. And so I got to return that eventually. So uh, when it gets here, eventually. Which also is going to have the... Uh, Blu-ray release of the 1988 version of The Blob because I've never seen the goddamn film. People say it's really good. I really need to check it out, so I'm going, going to get, get that one. It's a region free release from Australia, but a lot of retailers here in the U.S. have to carry it and everything, so they'll arrive shortly, and then I'll re return the uh, their version of the thing and whatnot. I just felt like I, I, I saw something on Twitter that got me wanting to watch the film again. I wanted to get the Blu-ray, and so I grabbed it uh, over the weekend at Best Buy, and uh, I watched a really good interview between John Carpenter and Mick Garris on this thing. It was very nice, very insightful, very laid back. I really enjoyed the insight John Carpenter gave further into the film, and I really had to check out a whole lot of other content here. That's the only thing I did watch, aside from the film itself, which looked really nice, really good. I know there was some little things about color timing and whatnot because the, the new 2K scan was supervised by Dean Cundy, the cinematographer behind the film. And uh, apparently there was a little some color timing adjustments done from people, how people have seen it at home video for years now. I didn't notice too much, maybe a little bit colder hues in some places, but it didn't, most of it really didn't affect me in any certain way. But I've been really curious about how the uh, Arrow Video 4K restoration is going to look because uh this was done from 2k version from the interpositive aero videos version in the uk which is uk exclusive is a 4k remastering from the original camera negative supervised by dean cundy and john carpenter so i'm curious to see when the reviews come out how people will compare the two different versions if they're that similar or because they come from slightly different sources and they're doing a bit more higher resolution scan and also have john carpenter involved in the the remastering re restoration process how it's going to look and whatnot very curious about that but um there's a two disc set uh seeing that they have like the tv network tv version which has some weird anomalous type of stuff in it kind of got me interested but um there's gonna be a lot of stuff i'm gonna have to pour over in this over times like uh they got two new comment new commentaries on this but it's like you always want to just go back to the carpenter kurt russell commentaries because vastly entertaining but I'll get around to things as time goes on, but uh, it's the only real thing I've picked up 
or the last several weeks because we've been so busy with moving stuff and all that type of thing and all whatnot. So I've been either working or moving stuff or setting things up, whatever it is. So I've not really been focusing too much on grabbing titles, but uh, that's going to lead me into where things are going for the channel here on out. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get at least one review out before October happens. So get back into the groove of things, then I'll get into horror stuff. The uh, Forever Horror stuff, sorry. Again, a little choppy. It's been a bit of a while since I've been in front of the camera doing this stuff succinctly. Of course, video updates are not terribly succinct anyway, but regards to that, I'm kind of kind of inkling one review. I'm not going to say what it is yet until I really kind of get down and focused and really get myself moving forward on something, but something's been tingling my nerves a little bit for the last day or so to kind of get into, so I'll see if I walk into gear and get going on that, but uh, I was thinking about something else, then I kind of got this feeling was a little bit more stronger, but uh, I got a couple, I got a whole bunch of things in the queue and whatnot. I want to do Purple Rain, I want to do Superman, of course, from uh, Dick Donner and everything, and uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. I uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2, I got to get to, eventually Predator 2, probably do Predator 2 around December, because it's kind of, not exactly an anniversary, but Bird 2 was released in December, and it'll be nice spacing out from Predator, Predator 2, then Predators, probably, probably like somewhere around February or whatnot, and then we'll have, hopefully, uh, Shane Black's The Predator is scheduled for a release in March, so hopefully in the next couple months we'll start seeing some uh, release photos, some stuff with a trailer or something like that. Hopefully they'll start a marketing campaign going sometime soon, because they finished shooting over the summer, so hopefully they'll get that going soon. Hopefully we'll get a teaser or something in the next couple of months, so uh, that'll be nice to get a confirmation that it's still on track for that and I can plan out my reviews accordingly but uh, I got a whole bunch of things I want to do collateral I want to it's like a long list of shit I want to do so I got plenty of things that I really want to get done in the next several months but uh getting into forever horror month I'm planning on doing probably three main reviews full length forever cinematic reviews maybe try to do some mini reviews I know I've been promising these mini reviews or less couple of months whatnot. I really haven't got into gear with that. Mainly, it's been this whole moving business of not really trying to get the big stuff out done and focusing on all this stuff with the move and all this other stuff. So we'll see how things progress in that type of way, how my schedule flows for the next couple of weeks. But we'll definitely be uh, continuing the Friday the 13th commentaries definitely soon. I think Steve's out of town for this week or whatnot here and there. Uh, he's going to be going out of town very shortly for something. But uh, hopefully we'll get back together and start doing part 5 and part 6. Uh, get together with Trent. I asked him if there was going to be any horror films he was interested in uh, covering for uh, October or whatnot. But I haven't heard anything back on that. I'm not really sure what he's first in for horror and everything. But uh, I'm sure there will probably be a few times that he has something he can contribute to or whatnot. But uh, at least get one commentary out with him. And can hear the Friday 13th stuff which is a no brainer flow through that through the uh, end of uh, Jason Takes Manhattan, and then we'll switch gears to something else after that. Do Lethal Weapon 3, I've got at least one request, so we're, we're, we're getting for it, and uh, we'll see where things go from that point onwards. But uh, keep the things fresh, variety, moving forward and everything. But uh, for a horror month, I'm definitely still thinking about doing Return of the Living Dead 3 and the 1978 Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I'm still thinking about something else. At least one other big, long, main Forever Cinematic review, full-length type of thing. Uh, batting a few titles around, not entirely certain what I want to do as the as like a cap or whatnot. I want to get at least three out. If I get anything more of that out, that'll be gravy. But uh, since I'll have the commentaries out and everything, I'll have. I'll feel like things are full. I'll feel like things are full when we have commentaries out instead of just boring forward and trying to do like four or five reviews or whatnot and jam pack myself and try to burn myself out or whatnot but uh it's all about schedule and everything see what i can get done but uh hopefully things will work out very nicely uh so i'm gonna try to get more reviews out that month than i have in the recent months usually it's kind of got, gotten down to like one review a month scattered around video updates and other commentaries and stuff like that so i'm gonna try my best to get the most out of it and whatnot so uh that's going to happen. I'm definitely, since I have a Blu-ray of it and the unread director's cut, Laserdisc for Scream, eventually a review is going to come for that. I'm thinking it would have been nice to do it last year 
because it would have been like 30th anniversary or whatnot. But uh, I might do it in October. I might do it in December because the film, again, another film that was released originally in December, be a slight anniversary type of thing. So I'm always fluctuating on things. And as always, if I don't get anything to in October, I always want to do something somewhere around like February, March, something like that. I really get that inkling again about four or five months later that I want to do something else or just drop a couple of other reviews. So um, I did that with Fright Night and Lost Boys and Leatherface and Evil Dead stuff. So don't think that just because I don't get to it in October, it's not going to come for another year. There'll definitely be another horror review in between those uh, months or whatnot. So um, know that. If I don't get to it then, I'm definitely going to kind of have an eye to put it forward in the next like five months or whatnot. So don't worry too much about that. But uh, general idea how things will go. So there's a lot of stuff I got to get through on those uh, the Vestron video, Return of Living Dead 3 Blu-ray, and the Invasion of the Body Snatcher 78 Blu-ray from Scream Factory. So this is going to take a lot of time to research that type of stuff. So hopefully I'll get one main review out before October arrives and then I can spend... I can, hopefully I can get something out within like the next week and a half and then spend the last week or so of the month just doing a little bit of research and getting ahead of the curve and get some stuff set for Forever Horror Month. So that's a general idea of the schedule of what I'm trying to get forward. We'll see how life around that kind of whizzes uh, around myself and everything, you know. But uh, things are kind of nice. I I'm liking the new place. and still needs a little bit of a work here and there. I need to get a wire rack over here, which didn't turn out too well. I have another one on order. It should come out very nicely so I can get a few more things uh, put together because we've got all the stuff out of our storage unit, which includes my tons and tons and tons of VHS tapes, stuff I record off of TV for years old. Monday Night Raws and Monday Nitros and TV series stuff. I got episodes of stuff from back in the 90s, reruns of 80 sitcoms, a whole bunch of shit. I gotta find stuff to put this. So, uh, And I got a place to put all my video equipment and everything. So uh, just working on things a little bit at a time. But uh, I got my Star Wars posters up. I got just got a frame for my A New Hope Star Wars poster off screen here whatnot. And right next to my purple rain poster so things are shaping up really nicely here i really enjoy this i really like the extra space i've got it feels open it feels free i like the blue paint job it took a little while to get used to it but i'm accustomed to it now and i think it looks nice on screen and whatnot so uh you're gonna get some a little bit of a different setup with the uh forever cinematic stuff but not too much different from things in the past you're still gonna see all the dvds in the background and poster and whatnot so uh I've worked out a little bit of things here and there for the uh, upcoming stuff and whatnot. Keeping my eye on Blu-ray news. There's a couple little titles, but I don't feel like I've had as much stuff to really kind of grasp on to put a full meaty package together for another review, uh, Blu-ray news video. But I keep I check Blu-raynews.com. I know, sorry. Blu-ray.com every fucking day for news and uh, discussion forum posts, stuff like that. I'm on it constantly so i'm not letting things slip by but uh we'll see how things go just a matter of prioritizing where i'm trying to focus my motivations forward so got a nice video update here going and uh i'll say that uh i did go see the terminator 2 3d re-release and i was mm, i'm not a big 3d guy in any type of way i've only seen a couple of like three other films released in 3d Two were shot natively in 3D, and one was a post-conversion, which was a Jurassic Park re-release. And I've never, I just never really cared much for the 3D experience. But I was interested, as I didn't see it, I woke up one day, I needed something to fucking do, so I went off and saw it. I was very, I was very well impressed by what they did with the 4K remastering job on Terminator 2, because the thing looked sharper than it ever did. The detail in the thing was just very, very strong. I just... I just was very impressed with the whole experience. The 3D was done extremely well with the sequences that will lend itself very well to a 3D experience where you got a lot of depth and layers and, and uh, depth of field in the whole thing. There's not just like foreground and background stuff. There's a lot of stuff in between uh, different focal lengths of stuff, things going on in the frame that really lends itself to a depth beyond what you see on a regular 2D screening and whatnot. So you got a lot of stuff going on. It really impressed me a lot. Basically, the opening and ending of the film have a lot of that stuff going on. 
a lot, a lot of stuff in the middle of the film doesn't quite lend itself as strongly to the 3D experience. But regardless, the 3D remaster, the uh, 4K remastering job was really exceptional, and uh, the score from Brad, Brad Fidel came off really, really well. Some points in the whole thing where I just picked up on little extra pieces of score in certain scenes that I never really picked up on before, whether it was they maybe struck a new sort of mix for the whole thing, or just the immersive experience of being in the theater and getting that type of quality of, a, of a sound uh, really helped it immensely and everything. It was really good type of stuff, just watching it and seeing it, the detail and all that type of stuff, and not having maybe like one or two scenes, maybe having a little bit of a, a green tinge to something here or there, but for the large part of the film, the color time looks almost exactly as you've ever seen it before, but maybe just a little bit of contrast uh, tweaking or whatnot or something like that. But regards, it looked really fantastic. It really, really did. I was very much impressed. And uh, unfortunately, they, they moved the, the, the home video release date. It was going to come out right, right at the beginning of October. Then they pushed it back to the very end of October. So we got to wait even longer for the Blu-rays and everything to come out. And uh, going to be interesting. I got to wait for the reviews to come out for the discs and everything because... I know the Ultra 4K HD one is going to be the version I saw sans the 3D experience. I just want to make sure that the re-release of the actual regular uh, Blu-ray and everything is not just a repackage of what I've already had. I want to make sure that they're striking a new transfer for that from this new master and everything. So just going to wait for some reviews to pop up before I end up grabbing it. But hopefully they'll have some screeners out early and we'll get some reviews out. And I can hopefully, if everything's all good pick it up on release date and everything so uh i have the film on laser disc i got two different i got the ultimate edition dvd the extreme edition dvd the skynet edition blu-ray and then the uh 2015 blu-ray re-release which kind, kind kind of is a better encode of the skynet edition because they removed some of the special features off the disc freed up some space so they uh removed some of the digital noise reduction and freed up more room on the disc to have a higher bit rate and everything so it looks slightly better and definitely loads a whole lot faster than the old skynet edition one so i picked that up earlier this year and in a, another video update and whatnot but uh that's what i don't really want to give you to give to you guys i don't know off the top of my head what the hell's coming out in theaters anytime soon that i have much of a strong interest in i'm sure if you threw a couple titles at me they would strike a chord or whatnot but i haven't been really eyeing any kind of a release date for anything or whatnot so uh i'll see what happens in due time guys but uh, i think that's plenty for this uh entry in the video news update type of thing and uh tell me how you like the the look of the new place and everything having a little bit of a different setup here we got all the dvds here back here and uh yeah a lot more stuff got, got more of my posters up here and all that type of stuff so it's gonna look really nice it's gonna look really nice guys so uh Hope to be back very soon with a brand new Forever Cinematic review for you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll be working on some great stuff very soon. I've got to well, main, maintain a little bit of time aside. Because there's a long-standing project that I absolutely fucking positively have to get done well before the end of this year. So I really have to keep a mind towards this old film project that a friend of mine is kind of waiting in the wings to, to get my final word and say and final tweaks put into a music track and everything so i gotta put that time aside a little bit here but uh luckily things have kind of even hopefully evened out with my work schedule and i can have a little bit more of that uh free time to get things moving forward on a regular basis so anyway guys thanks for watching and catching up with me here uh as i said we got the predator review out for, as of uh, a couple weeks ago Friday the 13th, the final chapter of commentary was put out a couple weeks ago with me, with Steve and I. That was a fantastic experience watching that film and having a good, solid discussion. Lots of fun. Talking about uh, Crispin Glover and some 80s uh, dance moves and everything and some really gnarly type of horror shit and that. And then, of course, Lethal Weapon 2 was a really, well, a fun fucking thing. Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> it was fun. Fun watching Lethal Weapon 2 again after a long time away from it and just delving back into the film. It's a really fun film. I mean, one of the best action sequels I think there is out there. It's really tight, really nice type of stuff. 
really interesting to talk about the uh, South African apartheid political climate of the time, which is very, very, very dated. But uh, it adds such an interesting quality to the film that we absolutely had to talk about it in a certain level of depth. And just interesting to comment on the whole thing and how I had that fantastic scene in the film with Danny Glover and all that type of shit. So if you haven't seen Lethal Weapon 2 in a long time, throw it on with our commentary. You're going to have a fantastic time. And we, we, we loved it. And we'll definitely be up for doing 3 and 4 eventually. So get a few more Friday the 13th out. Go back to Lethal Weapon and change things up as it goes along. So, uh, really fun times, guys. Thanks for watching so much. As always, you can catch me on Twitter and Facebook at Raven's Film and Instagram as well. So, uh, hit me up, guys. And there's always the Patreon if you want to give a little something to support the channel. Get some incentives. See some stuff early as it comes out and everything. So, uh, support things. And you get some nice little perks there to get uh, exclusive early access the content as it comes out and with the commentaries if you subscribe to that uh, donation tier and everything you'll be able to get downloadable audio files of all the commentaries so you can just throw that up on your iPod or your Android or wherever it is just sort it into your mp3 player whatever you got and just uh, stream it from there you can just have it download and listen to it whenever you're doing whatever you're doing so uh, thanks guys for watching take care be back soon bye bye